So I'd like to discuss what limits the number of nesting birds, and particularly whole nesting birds. I'm here on the Lather Estate in an oak woodland, and I'm here with Elizabeth Ogilvy. So, so tell me, why, why are we here? Um, so we're in an oak woodland, and one of the projects I set up when I moved to the Lather Estate a couple of years ago was thinking about cavity nesting species like pied flycatchers and red starts. Um, so one of the sites down the road, owned by the RSPB at Horswater, they've got a good population of pied flycatchers and other cavity nesting species, but that was something that we lacked here at the Lowther Estate. Um, so I looked at the habitat and we, we found we've got some nice oak woodland that's got you know, good sized trees in it and it'll host lots of insects which the pied flycatchers feed on throughout the, the summer season when they're here. Um, but we noticed the trees are really lacking in natural cavities that the birds would like to nest in, so there's lots of really sort of nice looking trees but they haven't got the holes that the birds need for, the, for their nest. So we set up a, a project with bird boxes. So we installed a number of them like this one here. Um, and we've monitored them over the last, last two seasons to see what's been using them. And we've had a mix of species that have benefited from them. So mainly things like blue tits and great tits, which are a common sort of garden bird that you'll see. Um, but we were really pleased in the first year after putting up the bird boxes, having had no pied flycatchers on the estate for at least 50 years. Um, we got three birds using boxes, breeding in boxes successfully for the first time. Um, three pairs of birds, I should say. And then this year we've had 12 pairs in our boxes. So they're clearly starting to expand and spreading out into the boxes across the landscape. Um, and it's been really interesting to see which boxes they've chosen to use, because some of them you think, oh, this feels a bit too open. Pie flycatchers are meant to like really close canopy oak woodland. Um, but some of them, like this one here, it's, it's, there's a few trees together, but there is space around it. It's not super dense, mm -hmm. but clearly they still thought it was suitable. There's still an abundance of invertebrate food for their chicks. Um, so they still successfully managed to breed, breed in this area. And that's a story that's happened lots of times, isn't it? That, that they've set up a nest box scheme and pie flat Pied flatcatchers have appeared often in abundance. And it's kind of interesting that, that there's not the natural nest holes here. Why, why do you think that is? So we, we're very tidy with our parklands. So often trees will be taken out if they're looking like they're going to lose a limb, if it's a bit dangerous, if it's in a public place. So then you're preventing any of that natural decay that the birds need to set up uh, a nest. Not as many old trees as well, because they're being thinned out and taken out. It means you're only left with quite young trees that are, nice and solid still and not suitable for nesting inside. So I know on this estate there's a, there's a lot of tree planting going on, but I guess one of the problems is that that's just a slow process. I guess waiting for mature trees is going to take a long time. And I guess uh, planting, uh, creating nest boxes is a good intermediate stage when you've got middle-aged trees. Yeah. Uh, and put them, that means that pipe flycatchers can, can flourish. Yes, so now we've been able to set up this population. So as the trees reach a proper age, we'll have cavities they'll be able to move into those natural cavities as well. Okay. Thanks very much. Good luck. <laughs>